rendering. Let's talk about it. I wanted to go more in depth on last week's topic and talk a bit more about rendering. While this video contains my whole process from sketch all the way to the final rendered piece, my main priority is explaining my rendering process. If you are not interested at all in the line drawing part of this video, I would suggest you jump to minute 350. That's where the rendering part starts. For this purpose, I also sped up the line sketching part quite a bit. I feel by now you all know my process, so there is not much to explain when it comes to my line process, but let me still go into it a little bit. I always have several reference images open on another screen that I get inspiration from. In this case, I had a Google search page open with several chainsaw visuals. These helped me in getting inspired, but I also did several study sketches of uh, chainsaws to get myself familiarized with the product. It is always recommended to familiarize yourself with the subject first before you want to do an illustration and even more if you want to do a design. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description so you can check out my study sketches as well. For the line drawing phase I use Sketchbook Pro. My process as always contains a sketch layer where I construct the main 3D volumes. I usually do another more defined sketch on a different layer, uh, but in this case I kept my early sketch light so I just drew over it. If you want your next step to be the final lines, then make sure to add all the details in this sketch phase, since you don't want to waste time coming up with too many details when working on the final layer. As you can see, I turn down the sketch layer opacity and make sure to use bold powerful lines on the layer on top of it. Make sure to use line weight properly. Drawing without line weight is going to feel flat, but if you apply too much line weight in the wrong places, the drawing is going to seem cartoony. And I think I mentioned before, but I tend to have this problem sometimes because I grew up with comic books and I sometimes end up with a bit more cartoony visual. But I fix it by announcing that this is my style and that's that. After I'm done with the lines, I switch to Photoshop. I create a new layer below the existing one and fill the area where the drawing is with white. I choose white because I have an action that does this automatically and it chooses the background color, which usually is white. I will use this layer as a mask layer. I will create consecutive layers on top of it for the different elements of the drawing. In this case, the different elements of the chainsaw. Each element I color in on a separate layer that I will transform into a clipping mask, binding it to the initial filled in area of the chainsaw. I lock the pixels of each of these layers, this way I won't have to worry about coloring outside the lines. Uh, make sure to always name your layers so you can navigate more easily through them. I, I find this is very important and not enough people do this. If you are not too familiar with rendering metals or just rendering in general, I would suggest you do a bunch of studies, which means just try and copy photos of, of objects and products and also look at drawings of how other people uh, render. It is important that through these studies you try and understand how lighting and shadow works on different surfaces and materials. Well, that's why artists spend 
months and years on studying values and understanding lighting and shadows. But uh, yeah, especially as an industrial designer, you will learn how to cheat and how to just play the system. And also that's why references are helpful because then you don't have to understand everything, but you can look at the reference and basically copy what's there. And that's also why using reference is my mantra. I didn't reference every part of the visual in this case, but I have been drawing for many years, so I have some experience. Not to say that this render here is correct, no sir, but I know how to cheat. For example, the highlight bars on the blade are absolutely not accurate, but it is a good way of cheating. Metal can be on a scale from matte to super shiny. I wanted my blade to be somewhere in the middle, so these uh, highlight bars help. I also added small highlights on the chain because you uh, have several round edges that will reflect light. The metal part of the body is a slightly more matte surface, so the highlights will be less strong. When surfaces change angles, depending if they are convex or concave, you get highlights or shadows. You can play with this quite a bit on the reflective materials like metals. So I had to work in several highlights and shadows. You can see the highlights on the lighter metal part are much brighter than on the darker metal part. This is not only due to the local value of the material, but also gives an indication that the brighter metal is shinier. The rendering of the plastic body parts works similar to the method I used for the metals. In this case we have somewhat of a shiny plastic, so don't be afraid to have some strong contrast in there. For the handles I just wanted to go with some matte nondescript, maybe plasticky material, so I made sure to keep the highlights subdued. You 
also have a reflection of the world around the object. This is a cheat similar to the highlight bars on the chain whip. We know objects are shiny because they reflect their surroundings. In this case, I didn't define any surroundings, but on the upper plastic part, you can still see some nondescript reflection. Don't overdo these because the brain will pick up on it. After I'm satisfied with the rendering, I go and look for textures to make the materials appear more lifelike. If you plan to only use these visuals for communication purposes with a client or you're sure that you don't want to sell them, you should be okay with just googling images and using those. I like to use cgtextures.com, even as a free user you have access to a great array of different textures for different materials. After I find a metal texture that I like, I turn the layer mode on overlay, desaturate the texture image and mask it so it only covers the metal parts. I repeat this process for the different metal surfaces that I have on my chainsaw. Make sure to not use the same texture because you have different metallic parts and if you apply the same texture it will look weird. Take your time and find metal textures that in your opinion come closest to what it might look like. To make the chainsaw pop a bit more, I added a shadow so it seems like the product is floating in the air. I also googled logos and with the same method as the metal texture, I apply them to the visual. Usually I go in again and also fine tune some of the details before calling it quits. This time around I wanted to add some design elements. I was playing around a bit with colors, trying out uh, opposite colors and complementary colors to yellow in this case, but I ended up with uh, the blue from the Husqvarna logo. I did end up lightening the blue up quite a bit.
And since I used the Husqvarna logo, I went to their uh, website, looked for some chainsaws and copied some text and some stats. And I went to the German side because I have a thing for German stuff. I also added a made up model name to the right corner so to counterbalance the negative space. And yeah, this is my full process of drawing and rendering a product. And I quite like the combination of dark lines but slightly more realistically rendered values. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. For regular updates, check my Instagram. And uh, thank you very much for watching and see you folks next time. Bye bye.